So I've been making videos about Luminar Neo here for quite a while, of course, because I love the product, I use it all the time. And one of the comments I get, or some, it's a variation of uh, a common theme, and that is from people that are generally kind of newer to either Luminar Neo or photo editing in general. And the comment is basically along the lines of, where do I start? Um, what do I do to get started photo editing here in Luminar Neo? Because there's a lot of stuff in Luminar, and in the year or so that it's been out, there's been more and more and more stuff added. And so I think it gets a little bit intimidating to people that are newer to it. But uh, I'm going to let you in on a little secret in this video, and I'm going to walk through how I go about approaching an edit and what I would do if I was a new user. Before I do that, I just want to mention real quick, there is a huge Black Friday deal happening on Luminar Neo. It's up to 85% off. I know a lot of people are excited about this. There's bonus uh, creative assets and packs and things like that that are included in these offers. There's a link down below if you want to check it out. You can also use my coupon code, which I will put right here, and that will save you some additional money. So check that out if you're on the fence and been thinking about Neo but aren't yet sure. Now's the best time to do it because these, these deals are pretty amazing. In this video, I'm going to walk through this photo. Now, this is a landscape, of course, and I shoot generally landscapes and cityscapes. So that's what I, um, I think of when I'm talking about photo editing. If it was a portrait, I would probably do things a little bit differently. But for this kind of photo, there's really a couple things that I focus on. Now, I think about a photo edit in terms of three categories, light and detail and color. And I generally think of them in that order. But what I want to do is walk through and share a few tips about how to get started and get the maximum impact out of Luminar without spending a lot of time going through slider after slider after slider. Because like I said, there's a lot here and it's really good and it's awesome. And over time, as you learn some things, you can build up and then go learn other things. It's like any subject that's large. You do it like a little bit at a time. This is the first bit. And I'm going to start with develop raw because Develop RAW is where you start with a RAW file, and I do recommend you shoot with a RAW file. It's just a richer data set and gives you more flexibility here in post. Now, I would start in the camera profile section, and you can audition different camera profiles by hovering over them. And in this case, I ended up liking Camera Vivid, which gives me a nice little starting spot. And uh, from there, I want to get into the light section because Develop RAW, you're working with that rich data from your RAW file. This is the place to start so that you start controlling the light. And Develop Raw is basically your getting started, kind of setting the stage edit. But it's an important one because if you look, there's all these different sections about things that you can do to the photo. And while I won't cover them all in detail, we're going to hit some highlights for sure. And speaking of highlights, the first thing I'm going to do is pull those down and pull the shadows up, something about like that. And again, you know, a couple of seconds here, and I've already got a much improved photo. And um, I usually would be playing with the contrast slider as well, but I don't really need it here. I've still got some nice contrast, and I'll be doing some other things that will also impact that contrast. Now, blacks and whites is a good section as well, but again, I don't feel like I need it. Just keep in mind that adjusting blacks and whites, you're going to be shifting tones, and therefore you're going to be impacting contrast overall. So just things to keep in mind as you're editing your photo, but I definitely recommend taking your time and going kind of slow here in Develop Raw. Next thing I'm going to do is go into temperature, and I end up going war uh, excuse me, cooler here. So I'm just going to type in 6154, which kind of cooled off the photo if you look at the before and after. Before and after, it's dis a distinctly cooler tone, and that's essentially because uh, I'm going to do some things in a few minutes that are going to warm up certain parts of the uh, photo, and what I'm doing is playing the cool tones and the warm tones off of each other because they're complementary, and that adds to, I think, a more pleasing uh, overall look. Now, tint, I'm going to take uh, to about a 10 or an 11, and vibrance, I'm going to go to about an 8 or 10 as well. I generally don't do anything with saturation here, simply because there are other color tools that give you more control, and I would rather do those individually, and um, I can control them better, whereas here, everything I do is applying across the entire photo. I don't want to start messing with saturation this early in my edit. I tend to prefer to do colors a little bit later. I'm going to do sharpening at about 20, and I'm going to call that done for Develop Raw, but that tool has taken me from that to that. So I think I'm off to a uh, kind of a fantastic start. The photo already looks better, and what we're going to do in this video is stick to this Essentials section. It's called Essentials for a reason, and that is these tools are 
essential to uh, to your edit. And honestly, here's a little secret. I use these tools 95% of the time I spend in essentials. There's a couple of other tools which I've faved up here that came from other categories, toning, super contrast, and color harmony. But you don't have to use those to get a really good edit. You can stick in essentials, which is what I'm going to do in this edit, and you'll see at the end, massive, massive change in the photo. Uh, the next section, section here is Accent AI, or excuse me, Enhance AI, that has Accent AI and then Sky Enhancer AI. Now, Sky Enhancer, I like to use that. It looks uh, a bit like a polarizer in the sky. You can kind of see how that's operating. I'm going to go kind of low, about a 15 or so, and that's just going to add a little darkening to the top. It kind of helps frame the uh, the overall look to the photo, and uh, I think it also frames that mountain in the distance. Now, Accent AI, one of the things that people have said is like, how come there's not an auto button in uh, Luminar Neo? And there isn't really an auto button, uh, but Accent AI is the closest thing that there is. It is one slider that does a whole lot to a photo. Now, that's at 100, which is way too much, and that's overdone. But that gives you an idea of what Accent AI does. A lot of people will start with that. And while it's a powerful slider and I use it all the time, I don't recommend starting there. I recommend starting with Develop Raw on your RAW file, balancing the light, and using Accent AI as an accent to what you've done already to your RAW file. Uh, in this photo, I end up actually going pretty high. I go to about a 55, and I feel like I get away with it here. This tool does so much to color and light, as you can see, that I think and I recommend that you got to be uh, a little bit uh, gentle with it. 55 is not really gentle, but like I said, this photo is one of the rare ones where I kind of get away with going pretty high. Um, I normally would stick around 20 or 30. And the other thing I generally do with this tool is use the masking tools to just mask it in or paint it into certain specific targeted areas, simply because I usually don't want to apply that much of a change across the entire photo. Again, this photo is a bit of an oddity in that I'm applying it across the whole photo, and honestly, I kind of like the way it looks. Just keep in mind that generally it's a little too much, and so I would recommend using it at a lower number most of the time with a masking tool. But here, I think it works and it complements the look that I'm going for. So that's Enhance AI, two sliders that are really powerful and I use quite often. Now, Structure AI is another great tool, and as the name kind of implies, it creates a little bit of crunch, and as I drag this to the right, you'll see what happens. You don't want to go high on this one unless you're really just trying to do an over-the-top, just crazy edit. I usually go kind of 15 or 20, you know, maybe a little bit higher when I'm going positive, and in this case, I will use a brush, and I'll go in and mask this. So I just want to paint that in to a couple of areas here in the photo. And that's going to be like along this riverbank, kind of in the foreground, and a little bit on the mountain in the distance there on the left. I'm not going to paint uh, the green in the trees. I'm going to do something else with those in a minute. But adding the structure there, it gives them a little bit of crunch. And these are busy things, rock and tree branches. So I feel like they deserve to be a little crunchy. But also, if you look at the before and the after, it's a slightly brighter. Now, if I really increased the amount, you would see that they would get significantly brighter. Uh, but my amount is you know, around 20 or so, and I like to do that kind of gently with the mask just because it's controlling the photo. And I don't want structure in places like skies and water. That's the other reason I like to mask. Now, having said that, the cool thing about Luminar is once you've closed a tool, you can open it again, and it's reset. It saves your edit from the use of that tool because you may not know this, all your edits are over here on this Edits tab. That's Structure AI that I just used. Part of that was Enhance AI, and part of that was Develop Raw. But I can open Structure AI again, and as I mentioned, I like to mask it because I don't like to add structure to skies and water. And in fact, I like to go the other way, and that's the cool thing about this tool, is you can just drag it to the left and create a little bit of softening across the photo. And then once again, get a brush and paint it in wherever it is you might want to paint in that softening. And as I said, my preference is to do that in skies and water. So I'm going to do that real quick, and I'm not going to be very precise, although I do recommend that you take your time and kind of get it right. But, you know, quickly and simply, I've just removed detail, so I've softened up or smoothed out the water and the sky just to kind of appeal to my artistic preferences. Let's call it that. Now, moving down the stack here, I'm going to go into color next, and there's two sections to color. 
There's the top one that has saturation and vibrance. Uh, I, you can experiment with that, and I recommend experimenting with everything. I just don't really use it. Um, that's because the saturation and vibrance are going to have an impact across the entire photo unless you mask it. What I prefer to do is come down to this HSL section, which may be collapsed. If you ever see a down arrow in Luminar, just click on the header and it will drop down for you and show you that menu. But you've got hue, saturation, and luminance. I'm going to start on saturation. And what I want to do is take the red slightly down, like a negative 8 and like a negative 10 or 12 on orange because I'm going to do some things in a minute that are going to make those colors pop a little bit. And I'm kind of preemptively reducing that saturation so that they don't end up being over the top. Maybe something about like that. Now, having done that for saturation, the other thing that I really like is using luminance. That's the brightness value of each of these individual color channels. So you've got eight different colors that you can play with, and by adjusting their luminance, you're impacting the contrast of the overall image. So in this case, there's green. You can see those trees. Uh, I'm going to actually go a little bit darker. So that's going to create a little darkening there around the trees. So that's going to, by making them darker, the stuff next to them is going to look a little bit brighter. So I'm impacting contrast again. Uh, in fact, you could come in and uh, brighten the oranges if you want to. See how that's impacting the oranges? And in fact, I think that looks pretty good. And you could bump the reds a little bit as well. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is go into cyan, and I'm actually going to bump that up. And if you look at the river, it's actually increasing uh, the visibility uh, and the brightness value, of course, of that color in the river. And then the blue, I'm going to take that down slightly, and that's mostly going to impact the sky. Uh, but a little bit of the river as well. And overall, I'm just kind of playing with contrast by uh, adjusting individual brightness values of individual color channels, as well as a little bit of saturation uh, work as well. So if you look at the before and after, before and after, it looks a little bit more muted in the warm tones, but that's going to change here in a second. Uh, but a little bit slightly different distribution of light because I impacted contrast. And I think overall, before and after, I think it looks good and definitely sets me up for the next move, which is going down here to the landscape section. Now, I said spend the time using all these tools. This is not a black and white photo. I'm going to skip that. I don't feel like I need to add details, nor do I need to denoise. But those tools are there. And as the name implies, uh, the category name, Essentials, these are essential tools, absolutely worth investigating and playing with. Uh, in landscape, you got three different sliders. I like dehaze. It really cuts through some of that kind of hazy look that's in the sky. I just recommend you don't go too high because you get these kind of sometimes over-the-top color look. But I, I might do that about a 10 or 15. It just cuts it a little bit. Uh, but one of my favorite sliders is golden hour where I like to come in. And it takes the tones that are already warm and it bumps them up and gives them a little oomph, a little extra, you know, juice, if you will. Uh, and that's why in color, a couple of minutes ago, I reduced the saturation of the red and the orange because if I left those the same and then added golden hour, that's a lot of uh, warmth on top of something that's already warm and saturated and it would be over the top. It's getting pretty red already. So, uh, you know, I might do a 20 here and if I wanted to, I could go back into color and further refine the saturation levels of the orange and red. I won't do that in this video, but you get the point how you can control colors specifically by doing that. And then the other tool that comes in handy is Foliage Enhancer. And in this case, uh, you can see it's going to really pop those greens. Not what I want to do. As you may recall, I dropped the luminance value of the greens back here in color because I'm darkening them to create a little bit more contrast. And so I don't need that tool, but it's a useful one on a lot of images. So using this landscape uh, three tools or two of the three, you can see the before and the after definitely a bit warmer overall. And the last tool is Vignette. And uh, Vignette is uh, something that I use quite a bit and I like to use quite a bit. It really helps kind of focus the attention of the viewer's eye. And I got a few things I like to do to just about uh, every use of the Vignette. Uh, the first one is um, I like to have roundness and feathering pretty far to the right. Roundness, I vary that, but feathering to, the, to 100 pretty much every time. That just makes a smoother transition from where it's dark to light around the vignette. So in other words, it fades uh, that effect a little bit better. Inner light, I like quite a bit. And as the name implies, it just adds a little bit of brightness to the center of the vignette. And the center of the vignette is based on this choose subject that I clicked on. And as you click and move that around, you can kind of see how that's impacting the photo. I had it over here kind of by this tree simply because uh, I think the, the river is leading your eye to what's called the Watchman. This is in Zion National Park. 
and I want to have a little bit of pop of light on the watchman, and so I put the vignette over there. Therefore, inner light is going to be focused on that area. So before and after, and that's my full edit. So if you look at the before of the entire photo, much flatter, lacking in contrast, lacking in color pop, lacking a number of things, to be honest, and now quite a bit more visibly uh, attention grabbing. It's fairly saturated, but I do like my colors. As you just saw, you can manipulate those pretty easily, but adjusted light, adjusted detail, adjusted color, and was able to take an image that was kind of flat, turn it into something that's not even remotely flat. And that's the power and the fun, frankly, of Luminar Neo. And that's why I spend so much time with the essentials. And even though, like I said, I consider myself a fairly advanced user of Luminar, I spend the majority of my time in essentials using these tools that I use today, plus maybe these other ones that I've got in favorites. I use those quite a bit. But if you're kind of new to Luminar Neo, or even if you've been using it for a long time, I think a lot of people come in and start moving sliders around. Spend a little time, focus on the essentials section. You can really get a lot of mileage out of it on any photo of any kind, to be honest. And you can take something that's fairly flat, turn it into something that has a quite a bit more pizzazz overall. That's how I would approach things if I was new to Luminar Neo. And that's um, hopefully going to give you some insights about how to approach editing and kind of how to start to tackle all the power and all the different features and capabilities in Luminar. Start small, focus on essentials, master those, and then start expanding a little bit at a time as you grow your skills and your confidence and as you learn how these tools work. And honestly, you'll get to where you'll just get in and your muscle memory will take over and you'll just start doing things and uh, you'll get in the zone quickly. It's powerful. It's fun. That's how Luminar Neo works. Check out the Black Friday deals if you want to check those out. And uh, thanks for watching, my friends. I appreciate it. I hope you're having a great day. I'll see you soon with another Luminar tutorial. And until next time, adios.